Okay. Okay, well, it is uh, now Friday, the 14th of July at approximately a quarter after one. Uh, market is done for the week. Yay! Uh, had a pretty good week. I mean, okay, a little volatile here at uh, on the last day, but the Dow was up 0.36%, and the NASDAQ was off 0.16%. And uh, let's see what the 30-year... We had the... Uh, Actually, the S&P 500 was off 0 0.08. So it was a very flat day in the, uh, or flat week in the market. And the, uh, looks like the 30-year um, treasury was uh, off for the day, 2.75% uh, on the 30 CBOE 30-year index, but up slightly, uh, I take that back, off for the week, 2.75 and up 0.72, seven basis points. On the on the day, so not not too bad actually. We uh, we dodged we dodged another another one. CPI came out on Thursday and it was actually pretty good. Um, market uh, had a nice rally day and but you know things are st still not a hundred percent. So things tend to sell off on Fridays before weekends. Nobody wants to get uh, get caught out there, you know, with a huge institutions with a huge amount of money on and. So they lighten up or they hedge out. But uh, everybody having a fun time here. Uh, Michael Harding, you're making your fortune in real estate. How are we doing there? Well, I wouldn't say fortune. <laughs> I'm fortunate to, uh, to be in real estate, but making a fortune, no. Uh, but uh, everything is good. Uh, last week was kind of a, a, a down, down week um, overall, in my opinion. Um, I think there was um, a pullback in a number of through the market, and and so that's going to have a an impact on the, the future, um, you know, transactions. I'm sorry, the uh, it was a pullback in the solds that that was impacted, but the new to market was 164 up three from last week, and um, you know, so I was anticipating. Um, having a lot more activity because if you go back towards the the sixth, the week of the sixth of May through the twelfth of May, we had two hundred come on the market, then one hundred and ninety, two hundred seven, two hundred four. You know, so we had a, a sizable um, a number of properties come on the market. So, um, if, other than the new to market, everything else is a lagging indicator because nothing happens if there's not anything. On the market and so the price change is a lagging indicator pending is a lagging indicator the solds even the solds under 30 days those are all lagging indicators because we need the one thing to happen and that's new to market so with the increase from the the uh, week of the the 6th of may on down to uh the 17th of june we had a large amount of activity so i was anticipating a lot more activity than we've had the past couple of weeks, but um, hopefully things will pick up and and folks will adjust to um, the new norm of higher interest rates. Um, and as you as you can see, we dropped nearly forty thousand on the the average sold price. So that's that's never really uh, a good sign, but. At the same time, there's nothing to be overly alarmed about because it just it could just be um, an outlier for for that week. So um, things are looking pretty good. Um, Bill, could you bring up the other data points? Uh, you mean this guy here? Uh, yes. How's that for a transition? Pretty cool. Hey, huh? that's pretty smooth. Um, well, as you can, this is the uh, market action report. This is from the regional uh, multiple listing service. They're the ones that tracks everything that uh, occurs uh, within the market. And at the far right, it says the uh, the inventory for the month of June is at 1.8. And that's with the pendings, the, I mean, I'm sorry, not the pendings, but the proposed under construction and, and everything. And so the, the true number, the ones that's moving ready, ready to occupy uh, right now, that number is 1.3. It's not listed on this one, but as you can see, um, if you look at the numbers, the new listings, new listings decreased 
Mm -hmm. That would normally be alarming, but I would ask, ask our audience to keep in mind the type of market we were under last year. It was just absolutely crazy. And so um, next week, uh, if I remember, I'll, um, I'll pull up the uh, new listings, the pending sales and the closed sales and get a, a five-year average so we can have a, a better comparison. Um, well, even that might not be all that great because we've had an increase. Uh, things were going good until COVID. Then it was a slight drop off for a couple of months. And then things really took off after they, they dropped the interest rates to zero. So, um, but I, would, I wouldn't worry too much about that large decrease. Um, the penny sales uh, looks pretty decent because we only had a 5.2 uh, drop from pending sales from this time to last year. Uh, and then the closed sale, again, if, if you look at the true number, the, the, the size of the drop, that, that's kind of alarming. But again, keep in mind that the, uh, the, uh, the market we were under last year, and uh, it's, it's, it's understandable that it's, it's not that, that bad. And if you look from the closed sale from the month before, we're only down 0.6%. So that could just be a matter of not getting the paperwork in time, turned in in time. So in order to close during that week or that month. So um, overall, I think the market is doing rather well. Uh, like always, uh, the interest rates is the thing to keep an eye on that in the unemployment numbers or the jobs. So those are the, the two things that um, I've been monitoring uh, from a distance and uh, hopefully those are still continue to trend in a, in a positive direction. So uh, that's it for, for, for me. For one, one question, just looking at this map. So does the RMLS cover all of this area, all of Southern, South, Southern Washington and all of Oregon, or is that? Um, pr pretty much, yes. Um, it goes out to Pacific County on the coast of Washington and Walla Walla County. Yeah. I think there may be two counties in Oregon that it does not cover, um, like Bend, Bend and Sun River, Redmond, and that general area. I don't think it covers. Um, but yeah, pretty much that's that's the uh, entire area of coverage. And, and uh, Skamania County also is something that they keep track of. Okay. But these numbers that we're looking at right now, that's just exclusively for uh, for Clark County. Oh, right. Yeah, it says I understand that. I just want to know what kind of what they're making the comparison to, you know, other counties out there. Well, no, they they just compare uh, Clark County to Clark County, uh, you know, the, the month month over month, and then they do a, a year by year comparison. So, uh, but they keep track of all those other uh, data points from the, those other communities. So, um, it's quite quite extensive the amount of information that we have access to. Um, okay, here I'll stop sharing that guy. We've been talking a little bit about um, AI recently. I mentioned that I read an AI an AI book on uh, writing. So an AI book on on writing for you or what? Do yeah. You mean? So here, let me uh, let me just share again. So this is the book that I that I that I saw. Uh, AI writer use Chat GPT to write 100 times faster and get filthy rich. Um, I am I am not yet filthy rich. I am rich in the friendships and the people that I get to hang out with, like you two guys. The filthy rich I'm working on. Um, but uh, so this is the uh, book, and um, the uh, I I. Full disclosure: I did not get it off of um, off of Amazon. I actually got it directly from the uh, uh, from John Morrow and the uh, um, the writing service that he has on an email. Uh, but um, one one thing I did do was he asked for a review, and so I actually came up with this review, 
and edit it using chat GPT. You can see at the bottom, full disclosure, editing assistance was provided by chat GPT. And uh, as I mentioned before, it's a very interesting book. Of, you know, the best way to use chat GPT is being very specific in your um, queries and kind of telling it exactly what you want and, um, you know, bounding, you know, giving it, giving it boundaries to work with. And uh, this is the, uh, the 3.5 version of chat GPT. And then of course the 4.0 version is coming out there. And there are a few others um, also now large language models like Bard from Google and uh, another one um, that uh, I've just ran across, which is um, Claude, you know, Claude 2.0 uh, GPT, which is supposed to be another, another, another good one. So maybe the next thing to do is just kind of, write something and uh, see what uh, the different uh, models come back with. So how did you come across that book from John Morrow? Uh, listen to a podcast by James Altucher. That's uh, one of the good ones to, to listen to. Um, I, I really enjoy his stuff. Um, you know, he's probably the number the number two podcaster out there. I, it's number one in my my book. Uh, but he had John Morrow on uh, on one of his podcasts and was, you know, referencing the book and stepping through um, the um, uh, the queries and, you know, kind of showing the incremental progress um, that they were making, you know, with each each refinement. So I said, oh, what the hell? This this sounds kind of interesting. And of course, you know, James Altucher, like most podcasts, they're pretty good about offering a, you know, a. a a, a podcast special so that's that's where i got access to the to the book which nice. is actually in a, in a kindle edition so worth worth checking out um and and you know there are anyone who's ever done any kind of writing as you know i mean particularly as we used to say at uh, west point uh, rd equals fc rough draft equals final copy the the hardest part on on writing actually is getting out the first draft um you know, because unlike West Point, <laughs> the essence of of good writing is rewriting. Um, so even if you have a, you know a what you might consider a brain damaged Chat GPT version to start with, you know you can you can hang a lot of stuff on that, and, you know, and improve it through through revisions and just working through it and just having a draft uh, rather than having to brainstorm and put a bunch of words down on paper to begin with. So I think right. that's but if you read my review, he goes through, you know, quite a good um, uh, examples. Okay, how do you do outlining with it? How do you do editing with it? Um, you know, I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to say in my thing. And then I say, well, geez, I ought to be at least using the tool a little bit. So I, I uploaded it to chat GPT and said, what edits do you recommend? Um, some, some were good. Some I thought were not good. So I just, you know, took what worked and left what I didn't like. So... We'll see if uh, my review on Amazon polls. <laughs> I hope John Morrow appreciates it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty, pretty, pretty neat that uh, you got to read that. Yeah, there's some other good stuff out there. Um, you know, so a lot of interesting things going going on there uh, in the in the in the space. Um, the, the the best thing I I would say is if uh, you can get one of these these large language models to go real time instead of you know up to 2021 like uh, chat gpt or some of the others um then i think you're talking a real tool in the meantime it's more kind of a almost like a parlor trick right uh michael Elworth, what's uh happening on your side of clark county well you know i also took a deep dive into the uh, ai world um, there was an automation summit for financial advisors this week. Ah. I missed it. I missed it because I was traveling, but uh, I'm going to check it out because I know some of the remnants of it, or if not the uh, primary um, lessons from it are available online. So I'll, I'll go get them and uh, read about them. Uh, GPT, generating pre-trained transformer. So Bill was talking about that, large language models, um, GPT 3.5. Um, 
uh, you know, indicative of more sophisticated um, abilities of our um, computers to um, generate um, language for us as we as we record. So, uh, and at four point oh, apparently is or GPT four uh, is around somewhere. Um, as these things morph, what do you think, Bill? They they sometimes change a little bit and sometimes change in in bigger steps, and so we'll um, see what see what it is. It will chat. Well, Chat GPT four is the paid version of Chat GPT, um, and supposedly it's got a larger number of neurons, and uh, you know the, the the writing that comes out of it is a little bit more nuanced. Um, and I guess you could say that the difference between the two is 3.5 is probably high end high school and uh, GPT-4 is probably graduate school. Yeah, right. What's it cost to subscribe? Any idea? Uh, $20 a month. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, but it is getting overloaded. I've noticed, you know, when I try to oh. use it, I've got, so it's... I got timed out a few times on, on the free version 3.5. Ah. All right. Well, maybe we need to be up at uh, 2 a.m. to use it. Well, um, so, is, so is the rest of the world. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there's some key AI terms. Conversational AI is a technology that uses large volumes of data, uh, machine learning, and natural language to talk to technology, uh, imitating human interaction by recognizing text and speech inputs. Well, uh, you may have noticed on your search engine in small print somewhere on the screen, it might say, um, you know, powered by AI technology. So if you're talking or typing into your one of your programs, that uh, technology may be um, working to suggest language to help you speed up the process of uh, recording or, or writing, um, depending upon where you're going. Um, generative AI also uses large language models um, that uh, uses uh, text, images, and audio and uh, relies on the data that it's been trained uh, to use. Um, machine learning is a teaching AI system that helps perform tasks, uh, understand concepts, and solve problems in a way that imitates human intelligence, human behavior, um, getting more accurate as it's trained with more data. And then uh, one of the things that folks might may think of being as AI but isn't is uh, robotic process automation. Uh, robotic process automation follows a set of instructions to complete a task uh, a repetitive human task and uh, to do it without error because it's doing the same thing over and over again. So that's a robotic process automation. Um, of course, the, the big companies, NVIDIA, Amazon, Microsoft, ChatGPT, GPT, and Apple uh, seem to be you know, dominating the arena right now. But there's a lot of small players that are trying to find uh, specialized niches uh, to apply the uh, um, these uh, concepts uh, to. So, uh, you know, that's a 20,000 foot view of a, a deep dive into AI for this week. Any uh, questions? Cool. Well, Mike, the, the, uh, the robotic, AI is those the, the one that does human tasks repetitively? Are those like the ones that that uh, oh I don't know like do the laser cuts the precise cuts of metal or or you know something to that effect? You're right, yeah. And so that's okay. a robotic process of automation, and uh, it's pre a pre-programmed, changeable as as change needs to be um, exercised. Uh, but it's not really artificial intelligence in, in the way that the artificial intelligence um, 
uh, progressions and um, evolution is occurring. Um, so, you know, I, it may use some AI in order to build the uh, the software, mm -hmm. but then it becomes um, uh, like a fixed set of instructions. So like you're saying, measuring, cutting, mm -hmm. you know, cutting speed, sorting, stacking, you know, Amazon warehouse, you know, but right. not really, yeah, creating a, an additional intelligence aspect to it. Yeah. You no, know, interesting. Uh, just checking to see anything exciting going on next week. Probably not much. Uh, Any big earnings come up this week? Doesn't JP Morgan Chase uh, do their earnings anytime soon? Uh, let's see. Uh, JP Morgan, uh, suppose it was today, actually. I'm looking at one, one source that says today earnings were expected, but it's not moving yet um uh, you know of course you know what's happening with the big banks or you know what's happening with the regional banks right that's why i was asking because of you know like the uh silicon valley bank and oh, what was the other one in new york um was it manhattan bank or what was it i don't remember but there was another bank uh back east that that uh, collapsed and was absorbed by the the larger ones, one of the larger ones, and so. Oh, signature, uh, yeah, yeah, signature. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah. J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, Wells Fargo, uh, beat earnings estimates. Yeah, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, City beat earnings targets, but uncertainty clouds the economic outlook, and that came just about. Uh, half an hour ago mm. so the big banks are doing well but you know if you're if you're the risk premium you, you require is increasing as well then it's not going to be as good yeah and i wonder if the um the, the uncertainties uh, that you just read lies within the the will we suffer inflation or you know not inflation but a recession or won't we or you know the, the feds and their handling of of the uh the the interest rates i wonder if all that stuff is what they're referring to when they're when they're considering the uncertainties uh yes so we're still working through it but the market is continuing to climb the proverbial wall of worry yeah uh so we'll see how it goes uh next week Anything else yeah. you gentlemen would like to add? We're at about the half hour mark here. No, just everyone have a great well, week. Yep. Everyone have a good weekend. See you next week. Yeah. Take care. Okay, we'll stop recording.